This week on Gadget, we're going VoIP crazy with Skype phones from Netgear. Hello, and welcome back to Gadget at thetechstop.net, where it's always time to get your geek on. I'm your host, Father Robert Palliser of the Society of Jesus, that's the California province of the Jesuits, a religious order of the Catholic Church, and we're here in the Center for Apostolic Technology in Honolulu, Hawaii, at the Newman Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii. It's a little bit warm today, so I want to start off with a shout-out to Kevin Daniels. Kevin Daniels is one of the VAR account managers at Netgear. He's a, a good friend of mine and he's personally responsible for getting a lot of the gear on the gadget. Some of the gear when we were first starting out. Everything from the Infant NV Plus to the ReadyNAS 1100 to the EVA 8000 to the Skype phones that we're going to be reviewing today have come directly from Kevin Daniels. He's one of those people who believed in the show when we were first starting up and so he's a good friend and one hell of a businessman. Now. We don't have Geekware this week, but to make it up, we're going to give you two bytes. This is the flexible USB drum pad from Brando Workshop. As you can see, it's a, a semi-rubberized material, sort of like a latex, that has the sensors built into it. Now, it folds up for easy storage, but when you lay it out, uh, it even includes two drumsticks, which you can then start practicing your primal drumming urges. You're not going to be taking this to a jam session anytime in the near future or using it for a professional recording. But the fact that it has uh, several tools for teaching, for recording, it really does give you a sense of uh, being able to, to really sort of take out your, your rhythm and get your groove on. Now, this is available from Brando Workshop right now for $42. If you, if you need to, to groove, if you want to express your soul, you might want to head over there and pick one of these up for the holiday season. They make uh, pretty cool gifts. One thing I would suggest is that you get yourself a set of real drumsticks. Um, these are kind of puny, and, and if you use them like this, they don't always hit the pressure sensor. But when we used a real set of drumsticks, it worked every time. The second bite of the week comes to us from Think Geek the sun jar. As you can see, it's just sort of a glass mason jar, but if you open it up, you'll see that there's a solar panel, a light detector, and a little power switch. Now, all of this contains the electronics that are needed to capture the sun in a jar. It charges up a little battery that's contained within this little mounting flange, and that battery can then uh, light up the three LEDs that are contained within this little tube. Now, the cool thing about this is that it's just kind of geek chic. You get to put this out in the sun, and then when it gets dark enough, when the light actually goes low, this will activate, and you get this little nice little glow. Now, we don't have the battery at full charge here, but uh, when we were playing around with it after a day in the sun, this did glow for a good five, six hours before it finally went out. It's not practical for you know regular lighting. You're not going to be doing any reading by this, but it is a nice thing if you want to set mood or if you just want to add a little bit of class to your geek lair. This is available from ThinkGeek right now for uh, $34.99. This is the SPH200D from Netgear. Now, it's a dual mode phone, which means that it does both standard POTS, that's the plain old telephone system, as well as a Skype phone. It, it combines it into a single unit. It consists of two different parts. It's the handset and cradle, and the cradle is really just so that you can charge the handset. gives you some place to put it back so it doesn't get lost. And then there's the base unit. Now, the base unit has two different plugs. There's one for your POTS line, and there's one for an Ethernet connection. The Ethernet connection, of course, will be used to connect this to your Skype account so that you can receive calls if you have Skype in, or make calls if you have Skype out, or just do Skype to Skype calls if you just have a rudimentary Skype account. But it's the POTS line, the, the, the standard analog telephone line, that sort of makes this really useful. You see, you can plug this into your regular phone system that you might have to ha at the house for emergencies or such, and you would have both your Skype and your analog service available on the same handset. Now, one of the cool things about this is that it uses DEC. That's the 1.9 gigahertz frequency, which means that it's not going to interfere with your Wi-Fi devices, which operate at 2.4 gigahertz. In our test, the sound quality was fantastic. It was just about what you expect from a digital phone. 
the the uh, the battery life was actually pretty good. We got about 12 hours of talk time, and we got about 120 hours of standby time, which is you know phenomenal. Unless unless you leave this thing off the cradle for an awfully long time, you're not going to be running out of battery time. Now, one of the cool things is that it actually uses standard AAA re rechargeable batteries here, so that you don't have to buy a special battery pack. You can just get one of the nickel metal hydrides and and uh, plug them in here, and it will recharge within the base unit. Now, I should mention that you really do want to use your, your desktop or your laptop to, to sort of set up your Skype account because you can't do it here. And it, it would be best if you sort of did your, your contact management on your PC. But once you've done that, you really never have to pick up your PC or power up your laptop ever again to, to make a Skype call. The range is excellent. Uh, we were able to get all the way through our house, just like you would if you were using a, a standard high-powered wireless phone. Now it does have the standard 2.5 millimeter jack for a uh, hands-free headset, but it doesn't have Bluetooth. We really would have liked to have seen that on a unit like this. I mean, it is a higher end unit. It is a bit more expensive, and honestly, it could have added a whole lot more to the cost. It also has a built-in speakerphone in the back here, which allows you to use it uh, hands-free that way. But again, we would like to have been able to to have a, at least the option for a Bluetooth headset. Now this is available right now. If you went online, you could get it for about $140. The second phone that we're taking a look at is the SPH-101. This is the original Skype phone. Netgear was the first company to release one of these. This is actually a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi phone. That means that you'll be able to connect to any sort of a wireless access point, either encrypted or unencrypted, and uh, connect directly to your Skype account. Now this, unlike the 200D, does not have any sort of analog function. You can't plug this into your, your home phone system. It is designed exclusively for Skype. So if you wanted to use this as your exclusive phone, you're, you're probably want, going to want to get a Skype in and a Skype out account so that you can make phone calls to people without Skype. The first time you power this thing up, it, it guides you through all the instructions. It tells you that it's looking for a network. You can enter in a web key or a WPA key. Uh, you can tell it to roam. You can tell it to automatically search for an open uh, uh, hotspot or Wi-Fi spot. And uh, it will connect as best as it can and, and get you onto your Skype account. One of the downsides of this is uh, battery time. We got about two hours of talk time at the most. And standby time is only 24 hours. So if you don't plug this thing in every day, it's going to go dead. Now, the good thing is that it charges off of a standard USB slot here in the, in the bottom, which means that you can charge it off of your laptop or your desktop in addition to the included USB adapter. However, even with that convenience, it is a really short runtime for a phone if you're going to be using it as your only one. As far as usage is concerned, uh, it's a solid phone. Again, like the 200D, you're able to manage your contacts, you're able to accept invitations directly from this phone. It works just like a Skype account would on your laptop or your desktop. So those people who are used to Skype accounts will be able to use this without any problems. And like the 200D, it also has the standard 2.5 millimeter jack, but no Bluetooth. When we were using this, one of the interesting things about this was that it would aggressively search for hotspots. When I accidentally left this in my bag and I went roaming around uh, the San Jose uh, just a few months ago, it was actually picking up open Wi-Fi wi hotspots from uh, the neighborhood and, and connecting me to my Skype account. So I, I actually received a call and I reached out for my cell phone and my cell phone was ringing and I realized it was my Skype phone. And I had to dig through my bag, pick it up, and I realized it had just latched on to one of the neighbor's accounts uh, and, and logged me in. Now, a downside of this is that it cannot do web login. In other words, if you're, if you're using one of those hotspots like Starbucks or uh, one of those Waypoint type Wi-Fi services, you can't log into a secure web page and uh, tell it to allow this to, to access. There are ways around it. If, if you're sort of a hacker, you can uh, authenticate the MAC address of this and then it will, it will allow. But again, this is, this is really designed for those people who just want it to work. They, just, they don't want to know what's going on in the background. They just want to be able to use their phone. They want to be able to use Skype to communicate. So it's, it's nice. It, it works well, uh, but you know it, there are some drawbacks. It, it, it is a first-generation device, and we hope that uh, Netgear will continue to improve it. But if you do want something that's convenient, something that's incredibly e easy to use, and if you use Skype a lot, 
uh, then the 101 might be something that you want to check out. The SBH 101 is available online for about a C-bill and a half. If you want to find out more about the Skype phones, or if you want to check out any of the products that were displayed on our show this week, you can go to www.thetechstop.net. Click on the Gadget tab and you'll be able to find links and uh, stories about these individual products. If you want to send us an email, either to comment on this show or to suggest products for future review, you can send it to us at gadget at thetechstop.net. Thanks for watching. I've been your host, Father Robert Balliser of the Society of Jesus. This has been the Center for Apostolic Technology, and there's no Uber Geek without you.